good evening everyone this is vinod from icel academy and you are watching youtube channel excel snippet video number 5 in today's topic we are about to see the two important function in excel one is a tab table function another one is a v lookup function in excel uh, we will see them in detail right now what is a table function a table function allows us to make our data work in a dynamic way if you want to add a uh, multiple uh, data structure to a list and you want to add formula once to it and then you don't want to deal with the formula again as the data grows for you your formula should automatically update the total valuation of it then your swap shop will be our table function in the olden day functionalities maybe if you are using a version in 2003 or below than that we use the function called offset function uh, i'll be doing a video on offset function soon and uh, again this is a far more easier uh, tool to use as uh, the excel users are uh, having a lot of data to work around so table function is one of the best tool used by the system so it is introduced in 2007 version and after that this has become a very big uh, tool right now and this saves a lot of time for many people uh, those who don't want to use an offset function probably may choose table functionality so let's see how to add a table function so where the table function will be available so let's go to the table so now i have a table in here on my sheet and you can see that uh, this is uh, we have around uh, 10 to 12 columns in here so we have an invoice number we have a date country state city sales rep customer product purchase cost and selling price and so on now i want to add a, a line item here so i want to give a total in here normally if you do a total here so what we will do is we will either add a total at the bottom of the screen or for an example i'm trying to add a total of these two on to my right so i'm going to create a new table here uh, i did one small uh, change in here so once you have copied and pasted the value the cell hasn't expanded according to the data structure to expand the data structure i gave a keyboard shortcut here called alt oca and i used this shortcut this belongs to 2003 version if you want to do that without using a keyboard shortcut even if it tough it's, it's if it's, if it is tough for you to remember a particular uh, keyboard shortcut then i can do that using a mouse functionality just go to your home tab and go to your format and you have a line here called out of it column width so when you click that it does the same and we do have a shortcut for this if you want to achieve this in the current version so uh, if you're using uh, maybe a 2010 version or maybe a 13 or 16 or 19 or office 365 version you can do them very easily just press an alt button once and then you can see the keyboard shortcuts pop up for each and every menu press the h So now we got the home tab, and inside the home tab, you got the list, and you want to give an O that goes to your format, and you can give an I to expand. So in the old keyboard shortcut will be Alt O C A, and if you want me to explain this, it's, there's nothing else. Format <coughs> column and auto. This is belongs to 2003 version, and if you're using in a brand new version, so you have to use Alt. and then you have to press h and then o and then i so this allows you to get the list so i'll do it again alt h o and then i this gives you the keyboard shortcut for the current version so we can try this in 2010 to 2019 or even in office 365 version So this is how the keyboard shortcut varies for each and every point. I'm going to just make it a little uh, bigger and bolder here. So now I want to get a total in. So normally, if I want to give a hit a total, I just use a sum functionality here, or I can use a keyboard shortcut for the sum function using Alt equals. So if I use an Alt equals here, so automatically it pops up the 
some functionality but I have to choose the range accordingly so I'm going to give the purchase cost and I'm going to use the same alt equals functionality for the selling price. So now I got my list and if I am adding a new invoice for example I'm raising another bill for another customer or maybe one of the customer here so let me just repeat the same day I'm going to repeat one more line item here and I'm going to just change the bill number alone. Again, I just selected the whole column by using a shift control and arrow arrow mark. So that allowed us to choose the cell. So you use the arrow marks accordingly because I just used from the left most to the right. And if you wanted to change them or if I want to use some other point, you can use that. This allows you to select the entire row. I used arrow, but I didn't specify which arrow. So according to the usage where the cursor point is you can use them accordingly and I just uh, copied the entire column to the next line so I just gave the control D as we have already seen how to use a column or population of data so I used the previous shortcut that we have we are regularly using in our list then I've just changed the invoice number alone now if you closely watch there is no change in my purchase cost total or selling price total so if you just go back to your purchase cost and hit an F2 edit button you can see that there's one line short so I want to manually drag the line to make the total run through so if I'm making a bill continuously and if I'm if my invoice is raised for multiple line items then I need this total to go automatically so if I want to do that so let's see how to do that so I'm going to just go back to my list here remove this again and now I'm going to change this normal table into a dynamic table. To do that, I can either use a keyboard shortcut called Control T for our total. This is, this allows you to bring or convert a range of data into a table using a Control T option to do it. And or you can just uh, try to use the Insert tab, place the cursor wherever you want in your data point, and then hit a table button. Then it pops up a box in here for us and says that this is the range that I am going to add a table to you and uh, if the table has a header so it automatically gives a tech mark in my table has a header when I give an ok you can see automatically how this converted into a table part uh, let me just uh, do it again this is taking only the data part Not sure about why it is not taking the data correctly so, but I have a but the coloring is not properly coming up here so let me just uh, go back to my list go to the table let me add a color to it so the coloring part is happening only to the first line so I think that I have a normal line here Data set perfect. So let me undo this and let me clear this. Let me have the data here. So I'm going to just take it as control T. Enter. I got my list. So let me change this to a table or column. Yeah, I have a table right now. A table which is added in here. So now I'm going to add one more line. To add another line, I'm going to just hit a tab after placing the last. Set point. When I give an enter, you can see that the table is automatically added. Now I'm going to add uh, one date to our list and uh, add the entire data structure. So let me just remove this again. I've added a table right now, so now my table is named as table 3. So how you get this information is just place the cursor in any one of the cell in the table, and you can see the table design pops up to us on top and on the left hand side, you can see that it is given as table 3. Now I can, I'm going to just change this as uh, invoices. So now I'm going to just go back to my list here and I'm going to just take equals, sum tab, and come down in here. And you can see that automatically now in the invoice table, this is the purchase cost. So when I give an enter, it takes the first value. Now I'm going to just take the whole list the column here so 
going to take the purchase cost. Enter and now I'm going to do the same for sum and the sales price. So now I got my list in here and if you closely watch, I'm going to just make it a little bigger for us so that you can see what's the change that is happening in here. So now I'm going to add a new line item here. So I'm going to just place the cursor on the last cell that is available for us in the selling price. When I give a tab, see I have another line coming up here and I'm going to just add this. When I add the list, you can see automatically my purchase cost valuation has been changed and the selling price value has also changed. So now I undo this once and then I'm going to just make these two data available in the next cell so I can show you whether it's changing or not. So just converted these two formulas into a value. Go to the last line tab 16.1.2015 then add the entire column to the next line. You can see that I have a new total altogether in my purchase cost and so when you use a table functionality you don't want to use a formula forever you can just add it once to your side and then as you add new data to it at the bottom of your screen let's see automatically this is going to fetch your data for us so for example if i'm going to just copy paste this at the bottom of the screen let's see what happens my table is automatically populated and you can see my answers are changing as my answer is not visible for me in the purchase cost i'm going to give an alt oca or i can use alt hoi which expands my column so this is how i can keep one formula added and i can just create the entire uh, formula list some people may not need a formula at the bottom of the screen. So sometimes when you want to create a formula, people wish to have it at the bottom of the screen, not in the right hand side as I did on the screen. So if you want to do that, so you don't want to really sweat more, you don't want to create a formula there, just go back to your table design and give a tech mark in your total rows. So you can see automatically it adds total row. But unfortunately, it adds total row only to the last line, not for all the line. If you are looking for both the lines, then the formula that we have developed in here will be the good solution for us. Now I'm going to just uncheck that. So it gives you only one total at the last. It's not giving you both the totals, but if you want both totals to appear, so whatever we have used in here, if you use that, that would be great. So this is how we will use our table functionality. So I'm going to do one more video uh, on VLOOKUP after this. I will clear this today and with this we will end our table functionality. Hope you have learned something new or you have improvised something new using a table functionality. This is Vinod signing out from iSelf Academy and YouTube channel Excel Snippet video number 5. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead and stay home and stay safe. We are extended our lockdown for another 15 days more. Stay safe again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.